a modern compiler starts by analyzing the source program text to produce an equivalent sequence of operations expressed in a language and machine-independent intermediate representation. The analysis or front-end phase checks that the program is well-formed, in other words that the syntax of each high-level language statement is correct. It understands the meaning semantics, of each statement. Many high-level languages include declarations of the type, for example, integer, floating point, string, etc., of each variable. And the front end verifies that all operations are correctly applied, ensuring that numeric operations have numeric type operands, and string operations have string type operands, and so on. Basically, the analysis phase converts the text of the source program into an internal data structure that specifies the sequence and type of operations to be performed. Often there are families of front-end programs that translate a variety of high-level languages, for example C, C++, Java, into a common intermediate representation. The synthesis or back-end phase then optimizes the intermediate representation to reduce the number of operations that will be executed when the final code is run. For example, it might find operations inside of a loop that were independent of the loop index and could be moved outside of the loop, where they are performed once instead of repeatedly inside the loop. Once the intermediate representation is in its final optimized form, the backend generates code sequences for the target instruction set architecture and looks for further optimizations that take advantage of particular features of the ISA. For example, for the beta ISA, we saw how a C move followed by an arithmetic operation can be shortened to a single operation with a constant operand. The analysis phase starts by scanning the source text and generating a sequence of token objects that identify the type of each piece of the source text. While spaces, tabs, new lines, and so on were needed to separate tokens in the source text, they have all been removed during the scanning process. To enable useful error reporting, token objects also include information about where in the source text each token was found, for example the file name, line number, and column number. The scanning phase reports illegal tokens. For example, the token 3x would cause an error since in C it would not be a legal number or a legal variable name. The parsing phase processes the sequence of tokens to build the syntax tree, which captures the structure of the original program in a convenient data structure. The operands have been organized for each unary and binary operation. The components of each statement have been found and labeled. The role of each of the source tokens has been determined and the information captured in the syntax tree. Compare the labels of the nodes in the tree to the templates we discussed in the previous segment. We can see that it would be easy to write a program that did a depth first tree walk using the label of each tree node to select the appropriate code generation template. We won't do that quite yet since there's still some work to be done analyzing and transforming the tree. The syntax tree makes it easy to verify that the program is semantically correct, for example to check that the types of the operands are compatible with the requested operation. For example, consider the statement x equals the string bananas. The syntax of the assignment operation is correct. There's a variable on the left hand side and an expression on the right hand side but the semantics is not correct, at least in the C language. By looking in its simple table to check the declared type for the variable x int, and comparing it to the type of the expression string, the semantic checker for the op equals tree node will detect that the types are not compatible. In other words, that we can't store a string value into an integer variable. When the semantic analysis is complete, we know that the syntax tree represents a syntactically correct program with valid semantics, and we finish converting the source program into an equivalent language-independent sequence of operations.